Well, how's it going, everybody? It is Monday night at 9 p.m. That means it is time for Dylan Talks Tone. And if you can, you can probably already tell that we are in a different place than we normally are each week when we do this show. So we'll talk about that in a few minutes. My name is Dylan. This YouTube channel is called Dylan Talks Tone because we talk all about guitar stuff and tone stuff. And uh, so if you are not a subscriber to this channel or if you're new to this channel, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button and hit the little bell. We do this live FAQ show every Monday night at 9 p.m. And it's really cool because you can actually participate live in the show through the chat section. And then we use a lot of what we get from this show and we produce other videos. We have over 300 videos on our channel and uh, we talk all about guitar stuff. Pretty cool. And uh, Leslie here helps me run this whole thing. And this is what we do. How's it going? Good. How are you? I'm good. I think we sound awesome. I hope so. It sounds okay on my head. We have a little bit more echo in this room, but you know what? Natural reverb never hurt anybody. So, uh, oh, I was about to get a drink of water and notice the new tumblers came in. Uh, they're amazing. You can order them on the website, Dylan Talks Tone, in the merch store. Um, and I'm kind of a Tumblr snob. Even though I don't care about Yeti stuff, I still want like a good Tumblr. These are just as good. They're awesome. They're powder coated, so this is actually powder coated. Really super cool. And then laser etched, so really good stuff. Leslie has another one over there, but it doesn't say Dylan on it. It has some makeup stuff on it and it's purple and white but anyway and my straw is purple that's important that's right really good stuff um so that's what we got going tonight we're gonna talk a little bit we're gonna do a few things we're gonna talk about um some of the videos that we made this week and why we made them what we did and then we're also going to talk about um nam in a little bit here once we get through a couple of other things we're going to talk about nam and our favorite stuff from Nam. There's a couple really cool things. Like, I want to sell everything so that I can get this thing. That's how bad, how cool it is to me personally. And then, um, so you might be wondering why we're even doing this whole different location. For those of you that are new to the show, we actually have a studio on the other end of the house that we use for this that's purpose built. And I literally about four o'clock today was like, you know what? I'm bored of the space and I need some new inspiration. On top of that, uh, we're using a completely different rig tonight. So the two microphones are the same, but other than that, everything else is different. So we're using a little portable rig. I'm using a Zoom H5 for the audio uh, interface portion of it. And then of course we're using Switcher Studio um, through the iPad Pro and, and all that. But the, re the other reason I want to try this is because we have not successfully done a live show um, on a Monday night from a remote location. And I wanted to make sure that in one way or another I possessed all the technology to actually do it. So I thought, you know what, it's not a rem remote location. I feel like sitting in a different place so let's just do it. So we're using the mobile rig in the kitchen, basically. Um, that's what we're doing tonight. But I wanted to, first of all, proof of concept to make sure it all worked. And second of all, maybe it'll... Would we have to travel with these big microphones? No, we're going to probably, if we do it uh, remotely, if we go out somewhere, we'll probably use lav mics. Probably. Awesome. Um, but that will just give us, you know, a little bit of flexibility. Um, I really would like to get wireless lav mics so that we can do this live and actually have multiple cameras and stuff and do the whole thing. So that that's the deal. Um, oh, I wanted to just try it and see what happened. Let me know what you guys think. I know it's different. It sounds different. And there might be a little bug here and there, or, you know, the sound's not 100% perfect. The lighting is definitely not 100% perfect, but whatever. We just wanted to try it. 
Uh, we do have Lemmy over our shoulder tonight, which we don't normally have. So that's pretty cool. Um, and some other, you know, local artists and family artists and, you know, so new inspiration all around. That's what we were going for here. And I, I feel like it's working so far. So what do we got going over there in the FAQ section of the, the website? Just people noticing that we were at a different spot. And I mean, somebody said we were smart because it was definitely closer to the liquor. Oh, well, that is true. The wine fridge is right there. It's like literally mm, almost within reach. And there's the glass. Yeah, there's the glasses. The liquor uh, cabinet is actually, for those of you that eventually come visit, because somebody probably will, uh, is in the foyer. We actually welcome guests. They come in the front door. Boom, there's liquor right there. Um, so, yeah, that's that's it. Um and Leslie's got some news for us tonight that we're going to get to here in a few minutes. Um, I tell you what, let's do this. Let's talk about one thing that I thought was really cool at NAM. Uh, now, full disclosure, on Wednesday night, I last minute decided not to go. So we actually didn't go to NAM. So all I'm going off is the same thing you're going off, which is basically premier guitar videos and Sweetwater videos and all the people that went there. So I, we actually, on the other side of the room over there, we have <laughs> the TV with YouTube was going all the way until 15 or 20 minutes before the show tonight to make sure that we got the very latest stuff that, that people were sharing. Um, but I wanted to share something that was really, really cool, I thought. So Vox came out with a couple of new amps this year. They mentioned the... Um, I think it's called the AC21. I didn't get a picture of that, but basically, um, or AC31, whatever they're calling it. Anyway, it's an AC30, but instead of having two speakers, it has one. And so, and then there's a couple other little modifications, master volume and stuff. The idea is to give you AC30, but in not such a huge package that weighs like a ton that you have to carry all over the place. So I thought that was really cool. I didn't get a picture of it. I, I was going to do that before and I forgot. I wasn't actually was trying to decide how excited I was about sharing it. But I thought, you know what, at the last minute, I'm going to throw it in there. And then the other thing I thought was really, really cool. Uh, let me share this with you. This is the what is this thing called? The um, mini Super Beetle. Super Beetle. The Mini Super Beetle. So this amp right here is basically well it's a new tube 50 watt amp and it only comes in a stack like that remember the big big voxes that were like five feet tall well this is a miniature version of that um and it's a new tube amp so it sounds really good according to all the videos that i saw anyway uh i have not played it myself obviously but it is one that i want to try if nothing else let's just say that um, you can see some of the features there on the screen. I think it's going to be a really, really cool, um, practice slash small gig amp. I think it will be really cool. The, the big thing about this amp, as opposed to like the normal MV 50, because it is on the MV 50 platform. Remember that little baby amp that I used to have, but it has reverb and it has tremolo. So I, I think that's amazing because tremolo's amazing anyway but um i believe that the little amp that i had was missing reverb i wish it had it makes sense so yeah man super cool um and we're gonna save the other one for later because uh you know um it's cool but it's like finale cool not like 10 minutes into the show cool it's right. literally like finale cool um yeah. So, and if anybody has any questions for us tonight, you know, guitar tech stuff, anything you want to know about, put it in the comments section in the chat window and Leslie will try to catch it out of there and um, we'll try to, we'll try to address it. Does anybody have anything so far? Mm -hmm. Nothing? Just hanging out and talking about what we're, what we've got going so far, huh? Yep. Very, very cool. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Give me uh let's talk about let's talk about a 
pretty big deal that happened in the news this week. Uh, this dude right here. Ed Sheeran? Yeah. What's the deal with this situation? I know he's being sued um, $100 million over, they think one of his songs is after Marvin Gaye's Let's Get It On song. And this is actually the second lawsuit for this. So I can see why that happened. Really? I went and listened to it again. Yeah. But see, here's the problem. And chime in, you guys, if, if you have thoughts on this. I, you know, there's uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right? We have seven chords. Um, and some of these old school standards, There, there's... You know, it's like those mashup songs where they put like all these songs together that have the same chord progression. Like nobody ever sued Green Day, even though they use the same four chords as every other song. So I don't know. I I, I don't know how I, be, how I feel about that. Hit in the chat window below and let us know what you guys think, because even if you're watching this in replay about how you how you feel about this because you know and and don't make it about well ed sheeran's dumb because he's not he's a wicked smart guy and he's a really really good musician um but there's a line in my opinion anyway between copying somebody and being inspired by somebody number one and number two it's gonna happen right like certain chord progressions and certain resolves to chord progressions and certain notes and everything work together. It's going to happen. And when you have such a simple song, like we're not talking about, you know, a lot of Ed Sheeran's arrangements are very, very simple because he loops them and everything. Right. So he might have a four chord arrangement, but it's probably the same four chord as everybody else, you know? Um, so, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that. I, I mean, I, I'm a number one advocate of protecting my intellectual property and I don't want anybody to steal my stuff. Right. But. Um, you know, I, I just I think. A hundred million bucks is a lot of money. And I understand it because it's an old song. So there's probably the reason it's so much money is because it's an old song. So they probably have years and years of. But what was the what was the Blurred Line song that wasn't that an older song, too? Yeah. And see, they lost that. No, they. Uh, well, yeah, they lost. They had to pay. Mm -hmm. But it was only like five million. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. Not a hundred million. Not a hundred million. And this hundred million that's coming is actually from a company that owns part of you know, the assets that go back to whoever co-wrote the song. And it's because they weren't allowed to tack on to the original lawsuit. And he's dead, this right? This is a secondary lawsuit. Has nothing to do with Marvin Gaye. And the guy that we're talking about that co-wrote it with Marvin Gaye is dead. Oh, I don't know. I'm pretty sure. Townsend? Or yes, I'm pretty sure he is deceased. So, yeah, I mean, I... I don't know. Well, I want to be, you know, I don't want anybody stealing my songs, but I don't have any hits either. And I know people don't want, I know people want their songs to stand up to the test of time and all, but there's only seven chords. I can understand. So you go to like the Led Zeppelin stairway to heaven thing. Cause that's a whole big deal, right? But that is an entire arrangement and sounds and everything like like if you how it depends how much you work you go to. Like if you went to all the trouble to like copy the instruments and the arrangement and, and had everything put together in, in this package that was the same as the old song. I get it. But if you're just sitting there strumming four chords at a time like Ed Sheeran is, it's just going to happen. You know, it's it's going to happen. Uh, let's see. BC rich 581 has a good question. Uh, he, he asks a, a question not related to this. This is just a normal FAQ kind of question. Does anyone have any experience with the Stumac four way wiring kits for telecasters? Um, I do not have experience with them. We make them 
So if and he says uh, he asks, he's asking for tips. Uh, I can make you one. Let me know what you want. But that being said, uh, what do you want a four-way Telecaster switch to do? That's a good. That's that would be the question. Um, before we get too far into it, that yeah, would be. That's a, even what somebody asked a subsequent question, like, right. "What does the fourth position do?" Even in that, right? It can do a few things. One of the things we do, um, I think, if you go back to last week's show or the week before, the week before last, our live show, we played the new Batfish. Um, and it has a series position built in with the other normal three position, the nor, you know the normal uh, neck bridge, uh, neck middle bridge. There's also a series, so you have series and parallel of that middle position. So um, we can do that. We can do all kinds of stuff. So just just let me know what you want, and uh, let's talk about it. As you, you'll I'm sure you'll you're listening, so you'll you'll mention it what you're looking for and let's figure out what, what we can do for you. Uh, Iggy Tommy says, if I put an enclosed pickup plastic cover over an, over an open humbucker pickup, will it affect the functioning of the pickup? Um, the simple answer is no. If you have to adjust. So I don't like plastic or wood pickup covers because they're thick enough that you actually have to adjust the height of the pickup to compensate for them sometimes, depending on the guitar. So if you have to adjust the height of the pickup so that the strings don't hit the pickup, then yeah, it's affecting the tone because you have to adjust the height of the pickup. If you don't have to touch the height, if everything can stay exactly how it was, only now it has a cover on it, it's not going to hurt anything and it's not going to affect anything. Uh, that's a good question because actually metal, anything metal, so metal uh, pickup covers are going to affect the tone of the guitar. In It's real small. It's real small. And it just depends how good your ears are to, uh, to get that. So, no, that's a great question. Plastic. Uh, let's see. Did uh, Mr. B.C. Rich... No subsequent Call her information. Caller back no. at us yet? He didn't. Not no. yet. Okay. Well, let's keep rolling then. Um, tell me about this. I don't even know anything. I don't understand this picture at all. Joe Jackson. Oh, duh. Joe Jackson died this week. Oh. Really? Mm-hmm. So how, how many are we down to now? I don't know. Latoya? Janet? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. How many Jacksons are alive? We need to we need to probably Google that because we don't have the original five anymore. Um, we should probably should figure that out. Um, I don't even know who he was. He must have been the. He was the dad and the manager. Oh, you mean Joe Jack? Oh, you mean the dad? Joe Jackson. Oh. Uh, yeah, eighty nine. Well, that's ab- not very old. The abuser. I mean, I don't know. Depends on what story you read, right? uh, Yeah, it depends on who you... Yep. How many Jacksons are dead? It even comes up on the, like, auto... that's like a top search. Yeah, it's an autocomplete thing. There were nine children. There were nine of them. Holy smokes. That's crazy. We probably don't have time to look at all this, but that is ridiculous. I didn't know there was nine total. Oh, we so got Janet's still alive. Yep. Who else? Uh, Michael's gone. Joe. Joe's gone, obviously. Uh, that's kids, because we got Blanket and Prince. If you name your child Blanket, you have a problem. Um, we got Jermaine. Mm, oh, yeah. Randy Marlon Tito. Mm, did you miss one? Did I miss one? And TJ, but mm. see, I don't think I don't know TJ. He see, looks young. 1978. So, yeah. no, th- that's not one of the original. I don't know my Jackson. Oh, here we go. Jackie, Marlon, Tito, mm-hmm. Jermaine. That's three. That Randy. That Randy. And Michael. And Michael. Yeah. Yeah. I think most of them are alive still. I'm not thinking they're going to do any kind of reunion tour or anything. But, you know, 
Well, whatever. I don't really care. I hate to say that, but I, I don't. It's not my not my area of interest. Um, I'm a huge Michael Jackson fan, for sure, and an early Jackson 5 fan, but I don't really care about the dad that much. Uh, BC Rich said he stepped away for a minute. Was there a follow-up on my Stu Mac question? Oh, man. Uh, there was. We want to know what the fourth position is supposed to do. For so, you. For not you. Not necessarily in the Stu Mac package yeah let us know what you want your fourth position and your your four-way switch to do and we're going to talk about that um and then you brought up something earlier about uh moog yeah what's the news there so moog is the latest big um name i'm gonna second it after the harley davidson news that just came out that is caven because of chinese tariffs and where are they going Probably to China because that would make they, sense. all of the components, those um, boards that they have to have, even if they try to use domestic parts at 30% higher cost, most of those people that are getting them from domestically are still getting them from China. Yep. So, yep. Circuit boards. That was the word I was looking for. Which is a real shame because. Moog has been one of those companies that was like, that was one of the reasons why they were cool. Is Did you know they were from Asheville? Yes. I didn't know that. They are. We have been actually invited to come tour there. Oh. Maybe we should do that before that changes. Um, yes. The that's, tariffs go into the place Friday. Oh, really? Yeah. So Asheville, North Carolina is about three hours from here. And that's where Moog is, is, uh, based and and the cool thing what i was about to say about that is is exactly that they're just some guys in a small town in a shed making stuff and it's a shame that <clears throat> that they will now have to you know do something different um to make their stuff because they are very very cool uh let's see Okay, so this is, we've got another question coming in uh, from Phil. And Phil, I got your email. Phil actually emailed me. Uh, we've made some cables for him in the past. And he wants this weird combined cable, and I didn't really understand what he was asking for. So I'm going to have to shoot you an email, Phil, and we'll get that squared away. Um, and we'll get that squared away. I meant to tell you that. So have you not covered, I'm not sure if you've covered this in another video, but what are your thoughts on covered versus open coil humbuckers? I'm replacing the bridge in my SG and was considering leaving it uncovered. Okay, so there is some older videos. I need to probably update some videos on this. Yes, it does change the sound of the pickup but depending on the sound of the pickup it already is you might not notice a difference at all if it's a bridge position in an sg chances are you're not really going to be able to tell a difference and if it's a good pickup you probably won't be able to um sometimes the older sometimes cheaper pickups with brass parts and lots of eddy currents which that's a whole nother long answer uh, about how those work um, sometimes that can affect it and there will be nerds on the internet that will say it absolutely affects it every time but the average guy's not really going to be able to tell the difference um, I would say take that cover off your SG pickup and give it a shot and let me know what you think and uh, I'll shoot you an email tomorrow. Oh, uh, let's see. The kit features an Oak Grigsby four-way switch. Neck pickups in series. Yeah, very cool. It's super, super helpful. It's super helpful. And uh, you're asking if that, if that's, if that. So uh, BC Rich got back to us. 
and he said that he wants a basically what we have in the batfish so he wants a series and a parallel for the middle plus a bridge and a neck um that is the exact uh wiring harness that we build here at uh at dylan talks tone so if you want one let me know i'll build you one um because I'm not sure. I'm going to look here really quick. I'm not sure. Let's see. Do, 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 do. We're going to check Stumac really fast since we have this in front of us. So the premium wiring kit for the Telecaster from Stumac is $50.47. And you have to put it together. I think ours is 59 and it comes with a plate and it's already assembled and all you have to do is we put little sharpie marks where you hook up your pickups and then you're done so if that's something that you want let me know and i will build it for you that is that would be probably a little bit better value um you know so yeah um so this pickup covering thing is very interesting because there's a lot of like voodoo that surrounds it but um, if you want to stay really kind of legit vintage, um, leave them on. You're going to get a little bit more clarity when you take them off is the short answer. But there's a lot that goes into that. I need to make a video about that. The problem, the reason I have not made a video about that is because uh, the Internet will, they will not like it. So I'll have to. I'll have to figure out how I'm going to make that one. That'll be an interesting one. Yep. What else is going on over there? Anything? Nope. All right. Well, cool. Uh, let's talk about Jack White. I'm glad you know it was Jack White. Oh, I know who Jack White is. So he has a vinyl only LP coming out. Oh, so there's not going to be any CD or some... any digital live music that he did but apparently so i learned this um it's a part of a quarterly vault that third man records puts out where you get special collections of vinyl only vinyl and then collectibles to go along with that vinyl and it's quarterly really so this is his next package number 37 is his own exclusive album so if you've not been to Third Man Records in Nashville, Tennessee, you need to go there. It's really, really cool. It's just a little tiny place. Um, I mean, they have, there's a whole recording studio and stuff, but you don't have access to that. You just have access to this little record store. And uh, But well, one of the things they have in there is one of those, I don't even know what it's called, but it looks like a phone booth. And you go in, and in the old days, you would put money in, and I think it's two minutes or something. You put money in and you sing or play a guitar or whatever you want. And it cuts that record for you right there and spits it out the bottom. It's like a vinyl vending machine recorder. So you go in there. I think it costs. It's not expensive either. It costs like eight bucks or something when we did it. It was a couple years ago. And I went in. Where is that album? Now that we have a record player. You know what? I know. I was just thinking that. So for the longest time after I did that, I didn't have a uh, turntable. A turntable. Yeah. So, but I do now. So uh, I'll have to go find. I know. I, I think I know exactly where it is. Anyway, you get a little 45 out of it with whatever you just played for the two or three minutes. It's really, really cool. Um, it's a, It's a neat thing. You got to go do it. At least go check it out. Um, I didn't know he was doing only vinyl releases, though. That's really, really cool. I don't know if that's a normal thing. I just know that's this next one that he's releasing. But it is part of that vault program that he has also. But, I mean, if it's number 37 and it's quarterly, I don't know how I didn't know about it for this long. Wow. No, that's really cool. Yeah, no kidding, huh? Mm -hmm. We usually keep better track of what he's doing. Yep. Um, any other news that you have over there that was what i wanted to share today no that's really cool that's some good news and some bad news i'm very interested in what happens with this whole thing with um ed sheeran because 
Well, I think they're definitely making examples out of some of these that they're doing lately. That's why is I, the scary part. Like, yeah, that's about what I was about to say. Not exactly that, but same kind of thing. It seems like there's going to be some sort of precedent set with some of these bigger ones. And I don't know. I just I, I don't know that I necessarily agree with them doing that. And would they have gone after him if he wasn't so successful? Exactly. That's exactly the thing. Yep. So now it's it's almost like some of these people are like grabbing after it afterwards to try to I don't know make themselves relevant relevant again or something or maybe they burned through all their money and now they have to go find some more. I, I don't know. I don't know. I just I don't like that. I I don't like that feeling that 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 is but you also have things in place to protect your intellectual property so i mean there are reasons for all of that yeah i mean i get it i understand the reason why you need to be careful about not copying somebody else's stuff i get that but i don't know i just some of these sound really really weird to me um it's it's getting a little it's getting a little out of hand like um it's very difficult now, especially even, you know, for YouTube creators and for people who have a podcast or, you know, you, you can't play any music. Um, you have to buy special licensing. Um, so like in all of our videos, um, we use music in our videos, but I, I actually have to pay every month uh, so that I can have YouTube licensed music that I don't get copyright infringements for. Um, But I have to pay for that. It's, you know, which that's fine. I will pay. That's how those creators get paid. But it can only be used for this YouTube video on this YouTube channel. I actually pay twice for it because we actually have two YouTube channels. And so I have to pay twice as much just, you know, just so that I can use one on Dylan Talks Tone and I can use one on Music and Mascara. So... It's, it's really, I, I don't mind paying that money, but I, I wish there was a a better way that we could do that and have more freedom to, to do stuff. Um, cause I actually asked about what kind of license I have to get to use. So, you know, we're watching like Casey Neistat videos and stuff and he's using people's music in his videos. Do you know, you have to actually call the publishing company and negotiate a deal for each one. There isn't really, there are licenses that you can buy from certain publishing companies that will, will give you like under this umbrella, these songs. But if you have a specific one and it is not, and if you're not already paying for it, you have to negotiate a deal with everyone. So it's really, it's really kind of dumb. I mean, well, you understand the annoyance with it because it's not dumb. You want to get paid, but how can we, how can we do it? You almost have to just create your own music for everything, which just creates more work, especially when we're putting out the level, you know, the amount of content that we put out on a weekly basis. So, so we did have a subsequent question pop up. Can you pop the Jack White picture back up? I sure can. So somebody noticed in that picture that he has um, a EVH Wolfgang. Wolfgang and um, asked what was up with that. And it does seem like he, um, a quick Google search says that he likes them. Yep. That uh, happened about March. Yeah, well, I was going to say not quite a year ago, so I guess. Um, And it was sort of a big deal because everybody was like, oh, he's selling out because he usually plays, you know, cheap, crappy guitars you know, or whatever, you know, and they made a big deal out of it. But, yeah, he does like he does like those. He's been playing them. And I think he has an endorsement deal with them. Yep. Um. So he likes new stuff. I happen to know he likes the same kind of grills I like. That, yes. I, I found forgot I, about that. I yeah. found that out the other day. So, he, you know. 
He's just a guy under there. He's just a guy that has likes the same stuff everybody else. But it else is likes. interesting, you know, because apparently a lot of people got that same impression, like uh, not the selling out part, but about the, you know how he always played like cheap guitars, but he was always fighting it, like. You know, that's kind of his signature thing. Like he. Right. But found something that works. Mm hmm. It's kind of cool. Yep. You know, and I guess that's the thing, too. Old guitars are cool. But somebody, you know, I made that video the other week or the other day about like old pickups versus new pickups and, you know, how. It's you're trying to hit a moving target when you're trying to hit some kind of vintage tone. And somebody said something in a comment on YouTube, and I thought it was very insightful that when we go on Reverb or we go on eBay and we see a vintage guitar that's really nice, we forget that there's like thousands of them out there. And the ones that are still really good that are making vintage guitars vintage are so few and far between that they're a rarity. It's not like all old stuff is not good. Like there are some gems and some special, really nice stuff in a huge pile of the rest of reality that is good. But that doesn't mean that all old guitars are good. Um, And so if he had bought, one of everything, all the old silver tones and all the old Nashes and all the old whatever that he found finally, you know, then maybe it was like, all right, well, need something else. I get it. I totally get it. So I think there's a quote from where Jack White was talking to Rolling Stone magazine. I think this kind of sums up the epitome of probably why he's doing this in the first place. Um, so he did. He went out and bought a brand new Wolfgang special and a 5150 amp which is from Eddie Van Halen's signature line. Yep. Um, And he said he read an interview with Van Halen that was talking about that. And he said, Van Halen said, I wanted something that doesn't fight me. And so Jack White said, I was like, those are the magic bad words I completely disagree with. And that's why I'm picking his guitar. You know, it's just, it's like. Still inspired creativity. That's what I was about to say. It's literally like sitting at this table tonight. Sometimes there's no rational reason. Right. And I'm sitting here five minutes before the show going, this was way too much work. We should have just done it in there. But the whole point is you just got to feel different. You just got to have a little different. I don't know. It, there's no reason. You don't have to have a reason. You just do it, you know, do stuff. Especially when we're talking about being creative, like, Especially if it's making you be creative in a new way. I mean, it doesn't matter. Who cares? I think it's awesome. No, I think it's really awesome. Um, Yeah, man. That was good art, too. Yeah, great. Yeah, that was awesome being able to catch that, catch that picture in the background. Because he does have some other cool guitars there. Mm-hmm. That blue is really noticeable, though. Oh, yeah. Well, his thing is blue and white, right? Right. Like everything he has, is, there's a lot of blue and white stuff that he has. So... Well, I'll tell you what, it is 938. I'm sure there's going to be some questions coming in, but we're going to talk about my favorite thing at NAM. As in, if I had the money to buy it right now, I would. In fact, there are things that I am thinking about selling so that I can buy this. Gretsch. Speaking of old crappy guitars came out with the Malcolm Young signature. And this guitar is so iconic. And the fact that they did this guitar, it's basically just like a duo jet, right? But they locked down the tremolo. Apparently he had experimented with a bunch of different knobs and buttons and switches and stuff. And then he went to the hardware store and got those little caps that go over the holes. So they, they duplicated everything to a T to this gets with this guitar. And it is basically what Malcolm Young played for so long. I want this guitar. 
there are not very many guitars that I... So now, <laughs> I've said that twice in the last two weeks. Because I really want a PRS Silver Sky, and I really want that guitar. Interestingly enough, they both cost $2,700. And total opposites. And complete opposites. Like, one is sloppy and, like, just a messy, play it hard guitar right and then the other one is like this ultimate precision super clean right but this thing right here man i just you know i've been very inspired by playing single pickup guitars in the past um now i will tell you the tv jones filtertron would come out and one of my filtertrons would go in yeah somebody said um right off the bat actually i didn't bring it up it was before you even talked about it somebody that was there nam noticed was this guitar and you didn't talk about it at the beginning of the show um and they don't like that guitar simply because they didn't use an authentic pickup yep i agree and i am not a tv jones fan at all in any sense of the word that pickup would go in the trash i probably wouldn't even sell it to somebody and I would make my own and I would put it in there and it would be amazing. And that guitar, I would play that guitar every day. Single pickup guitars with a volume and a tone. I don't even get it. I don't even know why, but there's something inspiring. Me and a friend were talking about this the other night. He's like, I don't know what it is. And I'm like, I think it makes you, it makes you play. You have no excuses. You have nothing to fall back on. You have no uh, nothing because Malcolm Young plugged that guitar into a amp with a cable. And then when they went wireless, he put some thing on there to add some capacitance. So it sounded like a cable, but there was no nothing. And I think maybe they used a variac on the amp, but basically nothing, just nothing. And I'm pretty sure they didn't use an authentic pickup that came in that guitar, for the reason that nobody really knew what it was because he basically took that guitar apart. You, you, if you look through historical photos of ACDC, you'll see it was, it was different colors. It was different pickups. It had different knobs and switches. There was, he, he experimented with this guitar on a regular basis. And so I, I'm pretty sure because I watched some stuff uh, about this guitar and I've looked into it quite a bit. And the bottom line is I, I'm not sure that they knew what went in there. And so because TV Jones, they do so much with Gretsch anyway, with like the Brian Setzer stuff and the Chet Atkins stuff and all that, it, it makes sense that they would use a TV Jones pickup. But I just wouldn't. But I, other than that, I, that thing is super cool. I I want one. And I'll either wait until one shows up on Reverb and grab one, or I will sell something and buy it. Because I, I want that guitar. That is even more than the Silver Sky. I, I want that way more than I want the Silver Sky. Way more. I'm super excited about it. Um, yeah, super excited. Yeah, and I don't know if it's a different cost. Obviously, there's different price points, different markets. Because um, Iggy Tommy seems to think it's four thousand, but I just double checked, and Sweetwater still has it for twenty seven hundred. So, um, but again, that would be U.S. prices. So, I'm, I'm not yeah. sure what that would convert to or make available on your side of the pond. Oh, where is he? Um, not here. I don't remember. Okay. Where are you from, Iggy Tommy? Um, I should know that. I, yeah. I apologize. Um, also, I know you watched it today because, or yesterday. I don't know. I caught part of the video. Somebody's um, thought that the third power kitchen sink was really cool. That is a cool lamp. Um, a really, actually, I think all, because they came out with four, right? They came out with four new amps. Each day of the show or something. That's a cool idea, yeah. actually. Yeah. Um, three amps and then like a final, final hurrah with the kitchen sink amp. No, I agree. Everything the and the kitchen sink. Right. The only thing I don't like about that amp is, um, and what turned me off to saying something is about my favorite. 
being my favorite is I'm not an AC fan, so I wouldn't. And that's why I almost didn't bring up the other Vox earlier because I'm not a big AC guy, but I, that is a cool amp and it's 3,300 bucks. So apparently uh, you can buy a buy one or order one by the end of the month. And I think they've got them for like twenty nine ninety nine or some twenty eight ninety something like that. Just under three thousand. But then they'll be like thirty three hundred dollars or something for the head. So it is not a cheap amp. But if you've ever played a third power amp or if you have not played one, you have to. They're really, really, really good. They, they're they good. They sound, they're just big. Like, I don't know. That's the only thing I can say is when you, we went to their shop and a couple years ago after NAM, one of NAM days in Nashville, um, I was friends with one of the guys that worked there at the time and he invited us to like this after hours party there. And so we got to play that stuff like wide open and the cleans and just the size of the amp. Like it, it felt like it was huge. It just moved so much air and it just felt so good to play it. It was pretty awesome. They're, they're really cool and they're really well built too. I don't know anybody that had one blow up, which is good. Cool. So yeah, man. Well, cool. Do we have any other questions going over there? Anything we need to address? Nope. All right. Well, thanks for hanging out with us tonight. I know um, it might have been a little weird with uh, the new setup and stuff, but I really wanted to try this because I, I really... I like sitting here better, and I like having my computer a place to live. Oh, yeah, instead of being in your lap? Mm-hmm. I don't know. I mean, maybe we'll do it again. The, the only reason we need to be in there really is for the, because of the mixing board for the, um, like the Kemper and stuff. Right. You know, so this is kind of a more stripped down and, and next week we probably will be in there because, um, I want to feature a guitar that I have here from, um, KB guitars in Memphis, Tennessee. So, um, I got it all together. Well, actually I just had to put strings on it. Um, it's got my pickups in it. Sounds really good. It's cool. It's like uh, he he builds a lot of guitars for like heavier players, but it's a Tele style thing, not really kind of. Um, but it's got my Tele ninety pickups in it, so it does. It sounds like this an edgier, gnarlier Tele. It's really it's really a cool guitar. So we'll probably talk about that next week, which means we'll probably be back in there so that we can use the Kemper and I can show you some some new stuff. But I, I really want to try this because if we are traveling and we can do this on the road and be able to, you know, come out and do some cool stuff, I want to be able to do it. And so just knowing that with, you know, some stuff that we could throw in a backpack, that we could still do it. Yeah, it'd be so. interesting to get some new mics and try that before we actually hit the road. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we don't have to have these big things. Are, yeah. Are there some more compact? I'm, I'm going to put my plea in for headphones again. You want better headphones? You know what we should do? I'll, I should try to find some headphones with, um, make us look like rally car drivers with the microphone right here. And then it would work. Can't get a head cam like... Bless his face. And <laughs> just kidding. Right. Well, I just think mine look really weird. They are really weird, but they were really cheap at the time. And uh, you you do need new headphones. Yep. Yep. She needs new headphones. I think we're going to have to figure that out very, very soon. Oh, see, you can drink red wine from your tumbler in our location because we're so close to the bar. We can get these etched in a wine tumbler. That might be on my short list. Yep. Yeah, so they have these short. Swag. They have these short uh, wine tumblers. I just need like to the stemless wine yep, glass. Yep, but they're insulated, um, and I so I just need to, and I think they're like twenty two ninety five or something. These are twenty four. Um, I need to just reformat the logo so it fits because it's a different size of. I don't know. I I was in a hurry the other night and I didn't get a chance to do it, but we will do that. Everybody do me a favor and uh, share our stuff around. I've made a little video about this today on Facebook. 
share, like, subscribe, share, like, subscribe, share, like, subscribe. Um, that is the most, even if you can't buy a cup or if you don't want to, or if you can't buy anything or spend any money, you know, n not everybody can. I understand that. Share, like, subscribe. That is the most powerful thing you can do to help us out. Um, if you share what we do, uh, hit the like button on what we do and subscribe to our Instagram and our YouTube and that sort of stuff. And just share the videos with as many people as you can. That would be, that would be killer. Uh, because that's what keeps us going. That's, that's how we, uh, that's how we keep this whole ball of wax rolling. So, um, I really, really appreciate everybody that has been doing that for us. And especially everybody that's been loyally listening, uh, every week, I have to tell you, um, I have been like, Oh, should I still do this Monday night live thing? And then every night that we do it, I leave feeling like, you know what? I'm glad that we did it tonight again because we got to answer some really good questions. Some people had some, some questions that they, they needed answered. We got to talk about some new stuff, think about new ideas. And, um, every time there's, there seems to be a reason every time when we do this. So I really appreciate y'all that, uh, support us regularly. It's, it's really awesome. And, uh, if you'd just be able to share what we do, throughout the week and um and our videos and stuff that would be fantastic it just means the world to us that you do that and i really appreciate it so until uh next monday night um i guess we will see you all on the internet